Welcome to the Medical Report Podcast, where we bring health to your ears. Our podcast hopes to help the community learn more about health, but we do have a disclaimer that all medical advice shared here is not an adequate means to diagnose or treat you. We recommend that you seek medical attention from your healthcare provider if you want more guidance on your health. Or if you'd like an assessment by one of us here on the panel, you can reach out through our social media pages. If anyone in the audience has any questions for us individually or about our topic today, please feel free to leave your questions in the chat and we'll answer it in our Q&A segment later in the show. If you're watching this after our live show ends, feel free to ask your questions in the comments too. Also, be sure to like and share this video. We want to feel the love. Now, let's get on with the show. Hey, everybody. Hey. It's your girl, Anita, and there's Zinsele. Hey. Today, we're missing Olu, but we're going to be troopers and gone without yeah, him. Yeah, we'll make we're it through somehow. Sending him all our love because he is uh, running at 5K today. Best yes. of luck to him. Um, so how's your week been, Zinsele? It's been good. It's been good. Long week at work, but uh, ended good. Okay, that's good. I just yeah. know this week is the end. Uh, today's the last day of HBCU week. Oh, yeah, I have to represent my HBCU. So well, I'm in solidarity. Even though <laughs> I just happen to That's wear right. the same we color. We just got great. We're <laughs> recording it today, right? We're ready. <laughs> so um, another special shout, shout out today to our producer, uh, Chris Hendricks. Yes. Um, he won't come up forward on the show. Chris, you want to you wanna pop in? Pop in his... Hey, hey, Chris. What's hey, up, girl? Debut of our uh, producer, the man that makes the, the magic happen behind the scenes. What up, what up, what up? How y'all doing? Happy birthday to you. Appreciate it. Happy <laughs> birthday. All Bye. love. Appreciate it. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today we're talking about cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy is a group of disorders that can affect your ability to move and maintain your balance and posture. It's the most common motor disability in childhood. Cerebral palsy is caused by abnormal brain development or damage to the developing brain that affects the ability to control muscles. The symptoms of cerebral palsy vary from person to person. There are three types depending on which area of the brain is affected. The first type is spastic cerebral palsy, which can affect about 80% of people um, with cerebral palsy. Those with spastic CP have stiff muscles and as a result, their movement can be different than usual. Spastic CP can affect just your legs, one side of your body, or all four limbs. The second type is dyskinetic CP. Those with dyskinetic CP have problems with controlling the movement in their extremities and it makes it difficult for them to sit and walk. Movements can be slow, rapid, or jerky, or at times their face and tongue can be affected, making it difficult to swallow, talk or suck. These symptoms can vary from day to day or throughout the day. And the third type is ataxic CP. These patients will have problems with balance and coordination and they may, they may be unsteady when they walk. They tend to have difficulty with quick movements or movements that need control like writing. There can also be mixes of all, all three of these types. So some people may have both at one time. Generally speaking, all patients with CP have problems to some degree with movement and posture. Those with severe CP may require special equipment to assist them with walking, or they may not be able to walk at all. CP does not get worse over time, but the exact symptoms can change over a person's lifetime. Common conditions that can occur among patients with CP are seizures, problems with vision, hearing, or speech. Changes in their spine, like the development of scoliosis or joint contractures. This is where the joints become frozen in a particular position from lack of movement. There is no cure for CP, but treatment with a multiple dis multidisciplinary team <laughs> can improve quality of life for those with CP. 
So today we have the honor of having a guest with us that is that that was diagnosed with CP at birth. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you the hottest disabled entrepreneur with a background in music and legal, Mr. Terry Moore. Hey. Hey, Terry. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. We are so glad to have you, Terry. Thank you. Yeah. So um, I've heard, so with CP in general, what were the expectations of those with CP when you were born? Well, you know, it, it's kind of weird because I was born in 1964 and there wasn't really any expectation as opposed to uh, most of the community, the medical community was like, you know, literally we can't do anything for them. I remember they told my parents to put me in a nursing home when I was a baby because mm -hmm. they pretty much expectation was, you know, his life is, his life expectancy is going to be short. He's not going to be able to do anything. And so compared to now, it's a right. lot better, but back in the sixties, it was like, uh, there's nothing we can do for him. Wow, that is crazy. I can't, like, how do you just discount someone like that? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're disabled. Well, that's that. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Have you ever had to take any medications at any point to help with symptoms that you've experienced because of CP? I'm, uh, fortunately, I haven't had to take any medications, but I did go through several operations. I also had braces when I was young. I had a walker, had crutches, so uh, but I didn't have to take any medication though. So you had more of a physical reaction to it as opposed to physical symptoms. Yeah, because you know with my CP, uh, thankfully it only uh, uh, really affects my lower limbs, upper body. I'm fine and everything like that. And um, pretty much with that, I just I've been able to move around. It's just that when I was a little kid, it was very definitely very uh what's the word limited right yeah yeah <clears throat> so you've been very successful in your career in the music industry what words of wisdom do you have to share with people to help them push through their physical limitations when building their career well you know in, in, in regards to my music career i just i really believe that i could do it um I just could not understand. I knew that there were people in the music industry that were doing what I wanted to do, whether it was behind the scenes or in front of the scenes. And I just could not understand for the life of me why I couldn't do it also because I, I you know, I would say to myself, well, you know, they get up and get dressed just like I get dressed. Yeah. They brush their teeth like I brush my teeth. I mean, That's they can't right. be that much smarter than me, so I know. <laughs> You know, you know, know. They do it, I know <laughs> right. I do it, so. yeah. Tell us a little bit about your uh, your profession with music. Uh, background in music started in '86, living in, in New York City, and uh, when I first started my career, I actually started working at a recording studio in Manhattan. Uh, it was a great experience. I worked for free. I was assistant manager, cleaning out the studio and answering the phones. But it gave me the opportunity to work with uh, Roy Ayers, Yoko Ono, and uh, Brenda K. Starr, who discovered Mariah Carey. And then after that, I got my first hand job in the music industry working at Billboard magazine. Did that for about a year. And then uh, after that, I started working for an independent record label called First Priority Music out of Brooklyn. They were distributed by Atlantic Records. But their claim to fame, well, to claim the fame was the first female on that label was actually MC Light. And then also, too, they had an artist uh, group called Audio 2, which had a huge record called Top Billing. But working with First Priority Music opened up the doors for me to work with everybody from Queen Latifah, Jada Pinkett, Will Smith, and a bunch of other people. Wow. That's so cool. Uh, I would have had some star star studded shock. I'm sorry. If I'd right. seen those people. I'd have been like, oh, hey, Will. Right, right. right. Yeah, I, I, I did throwing out on a couple of people that I met in person, so absolutely. Yeah, so who was yeah. the coolest that you feel that you met so far? 
Wow, you know, it's so many. Uh, Will Smith is definitely very cool. Jada, uh, Latifah is like a, a younger sister to me. Yeah. Um, the Light is very cool. Uh, I really, uh, the majority of people are so very down to earth. Very down to earth. Yeah. They always seem like they have really cool personalities. I just always yeah. wonder because it's like you never really know the person. You yeah. Know? yeah. But yeah, yeah that's cool. Tupac was very down to earth. Tupac oh, and Aaliyah. Yeah, Tupac? Yeah, I kind of would have expected Aaliyah. that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Tupac and Aaliyah was very cool. That's yeah. good. That's good. So now you have uh, working more so with background in legal, right? Mm -hmm. So tell us a bit about more about that. Well, you know, one of the things I know as a, a, a person with disability with cerebral palsy is that when my mom was raising me and my dad was raising me in New York, uh, I don't believe they had a lot of resources to find out what my legal rights were when it dealt with dealing with the hospitals and dealing with the doctors and even dealing with schools. So I partnered with a company called Legal Shield. It's been around for about 50 years. And pretty much what it is, is just give everyday, everyday people access to some of the top law firms uh, for less than for about 25 bucks a month. And what's cool is not only do we deal with families, but we also deal with small business owners who you know, don't want to pay a high retainer, but still have the same access as if they were paying a high retainer for a law firm. Okay. So what are examples of maybe things that people have used the legal shield for if they've gotten it for themselves personally for their child with disability? Great question. Uh, for a parent that has a disabled child, we have 24-7 access. So you literally can pick up the phone at 3 o'clock in the morning and call your attorney if, for example, you get pulled over, you have a, a disabled child in the back seat, and the police are asking you to get out of the car, and you're like, well, why that am I getting here. out of the car? Oh, shit, yeah. Why am I getting out of the car? Let me get my attorney on the phone. Uh, we've got a lot of success with that. And then also, too, being able to get your will done, because if you have a disabled child that is dependent on you, and God forbid it, it happens to you or both parents, then that child, unfortunately, will go into the system until the judge and the county or the city can state, I should say, can determine who that child is going to go to. So it's very important to get your will done. And Legal Shield will actually do your will for free just by becoming a member. And what type of will is that? Uh, it would be your living will, your medical power of attorney, and your regular will. So you get three documents all for the price of nothing just for being a member. So a living will, living power of attorney, and uh, a regular will. medical power of attorney, as well as the basic will that most people get that says, this is what I want to leave. This is how I want my affairs to go. Okay. Wow. That is good information. So can you tell us a bit about the differences between those? Everybody understands that. Yeah, absolutely. So a regular will is something more so of, um, hey, if something happens to me, this is what I want my belongings to go to. And one of the biggest misconceptions with people uh, when it comes to getting a will is people say, well, you know, I don't really have anything to leave. Uh, I don't have anything of value. Would you be surprised how many people start fighting over the mattresses? You know, my father always right? tells me. <laughs> right? <laughs> that's when the ugly comes out of people. Yeah, so those yeah. pennies add up. Those pennies yes, add exactly. up. Okay. You know, somebody wants the back scratcher that I've got. But you know, my father would always tell me, you want to break up a family, let somebody die. Yes. You know, yes. The people will yep. fight over everything. So Will basically says down to the T, I'm leaving this, my 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 baseball hats for my kids. I'm yeah. leaving my electronics for my daughters. And it breaks it down. Uh, a medical power of attorney really gives the person uh, a medical power of attorney to basically act on your behalf. If you if you can't speak for yourself, if you're in a hospital, a living will is basically, hey, this is what I want and don't want while I'm in the hospital. Right. Okay. Yeah. So especially with COVID happening, you know, you yes. got somebody that says, hey, this is what they want done. This is what they don't want done, and I can act on their behalf. And then they also have a living will that basically speaks on their behalf as well. So, what age are you looking at doing something like this? I heard at sixteen, um, but because you know, as a parent, you can take care of the child all the way up, you know, until 
whenever, but usually there's something that happens and they'll, is it 21? They'll say they're an adult now, so you can't make these decisions or? Well, it, it really depends on the, the, that child's capability of can they speak for themselves. But I say to all parents, whether your child is only two years old or 30 years old and they're still dependent on you, if they're in a situation where they, they can't live on their own, then you want to put those paperwork in, in place so that your, your final riches are, you know, are received. Our because honor. the last thing you want to happen is that, God forbid something happens to that person, and the last person that you wanted your child to go to ends up with that person, that aunt that you couldn't stand, or that brother that you knew wasn't going to take care of them. They just wanted the money that they yeah. can receive every month, you know? Yeah. So, yeah you I know, don't know if this... This might be a little too too specific, but what if you have two parents and they're divorced and special needs at that? But do you and and they disagree on where the child should go? Have you dealt with that? I haven't done with that dealt with that me per se. Because the good thing about what I do is I'm not actually an attorney, um, but I I connect people with law firms around the country. We have we have uh, sort of like a, a a contract with about 50 major law firms in every state that serves our members. So, for example, I'm in the state of Georgia. The law firm that we use is uh, Deming Parker, Hoffman, Campbell. They're one of the law, same law firms that Coca-Cola uses. And um, we pay that law firm $2 million per month because of all the members that are paying between $25 all the way up to $169. But... And in, in, in respect to your your question is that if, if you got into a situation where the father says, I want my son to go, if something happens to me, go to the, my sister, and the wife has said, no, I want him to go to my brother, I, I believe at that point it's going to have to go to the court, hopefully before you pass. And let gotcha. the court decide. Which is why it's important to get it done early. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, okay. Of people wait to the last minute because, of course, and I understand a lot of people say, well, uh, I, I can't afford it because the average will is anywhere from eight hundred dollars and up, and that's one of the reasons why Legal Shield does it for free to say yeah. you know we don't want you to have any excuse to do. It. I don't know, man. If you can afford that car payment, I think you can afford that one will. Just exactly. saying. Absolutely. Just saying. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, it, you'd really be surprised what happens when when a person dies without a will. Okay. Yeah, yeah I've seen not so great situations and instances where people have not had a will. I mean, working in the healthcare industry in general, like you're eventually you have a patient that passes and, or that's put on hospice and they can't yeah. make decisions for themselves anymore. Yeah. And then the family comes in and then their long lost sister, who's their yeah. next of kin comes in. That's not seen them in 20 plus years, but they feel that because I'm the next of kin, I make all the decisions right. for this patient though. They know nothing about that patient anymore. And right. it's like legally, yeah, they are yeah. the next kin, but they don't yeah. have any documentation that says I don't want my long lost sister not to tell the doctor what to do with my health. Yeah, yeah. So, usually, in my situation, it's usually where one one child is making all the medical decisions, but the other one's caring for them. Right. 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 Yeah. So. Yeah, I I have uh, one of my legal show members. Her and her sister were actually at their father's bedside in the hospital. And the father told them exactly what he wanted. He didn't have a will in place. He told them, this is exactly what I want. This is how I want it to go. Unfortunately, when he passed, one of the sisters were like, okay, what did he say? No, no. And, and they started arguing oh. to the point where they didn't speak for years. Oh, my goodness. They started speaking like within the last few years. But it's, it's, it's important to get it in writing. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. Not, not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> not fun. All right. So audience, now is the time for your questions. Again, we are not able to diagnose or treat you, but here, uh, here on the podcast, but we're open to your general questions. So if you have anything, let us know. Let's see if we got anything. One says having a medical power of attorney, uh, such a great topic. Glad it was brought up. I've personally seen the ugly side of how people can get when someone passes. Having all your ducks in a row helps prevent family confusion later. Tessa. Exactly. 
Yes. Yes. That's exactly what I've seen and experienced with these patients. It's unfortunate, but people get it done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I tell you. All right. Looks like Chris has a question. I have heard that CP is caused by lack of oxygen during birth. Is that true? Not you know always. What? I don't know. I don't. I don't know if that was my case, though. Yeah, I think yeah, German measles was what affected my birth most part. Yeah. So yeah. your experience was that it was your your mom had German measles and then you were born. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely com complicated the birth. Yeah. Yeah. So um, lack of oxygen could be a cause, but it's a very small number of cases with people that have cerebral palsy. Um, an uh, abnormal development of the brain can occur before birth, during birth, or within a month after the birth. So it's usually within the first years of the child's life that people will see whether or not um, they have signs of cerebral palsy. And it can be associated with an infection from the mom or um, head injury that can occur after birth, after birth as well. So not always the direct cause, but... Yeah. As we were talking earlier, uh, Terry, my nephew has cerebral palsy and uh, he received his. Um, he was born six months premature and he was born with it. And a lot of his presented. He had the um, uh, difficulty with movement with his arms and legs, more the clumsy type of, you know, uh, movements that got better over the years. And um, I know his, one of his foot was turned inward and had to be corrected a little bit, um, but uh, other also as well as some uh, psychiatric issues as well, having to function with that. So, but, yeah. uh, when, when I was born, I, I literally stood on my toes and my knees were bent. And okay. My, my posture and my balance was terrible. Uh, one of the things that I did do um, to sort of help with the balance was I actually studied uh, martial arts. I studied uh, drunken monkey style, which okay. helped me to cool. over my legs. And and then when I went to Shriners Hospital, uh, they actually lengthened my heel cord to make my feet flat, and then they lengthened my hamstring so my knees, my legs would be straight up. So if I'm standing, you can't actually see that I have cerebral palsy. If I'm sitting, it's only when I'm walking. Mm hmm. Well, Terry's just a regular Superman. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Lucius has a question. What is the best way to support CP organizations and the cause in general? Um, That's a good question. I'm not quite sure on that one. I mean, I would just, I guess, research uh, organizations for cerebral palsy and reach out to them. It's probably the best way to do it. I know a lot of times organizations will have uh, donations that they accept um, toward research. And so that probably be the best route to take. Yeah, UCP is one of the largest organizations in the United Cerebral Palsy. And they have chapters all over the country. So they probably have a, a social media page as well. Yeah, that's a yeah. good one to look at. Yeah. Uh, could it occur or develop later in life? Um, usually we only really see it early in life, like yeah. in childhood. So the first few years of life, like usually less than one yeah. is when you'll start developing symptoms. Any other questions? Lucia said, I. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, Lucius. <laughs> Thank so, you for your question. Terry, was it, it where did you have any challenges as far as like I was mentioning before uh with my nephew socially uh making friends as a teen and as an adult and uh especially with the dating scene with him? <laughs> you know, I I I you know funny, I was just having this conversation this morning, but uh my self-esteem in elementary was bad. Because I think I, I you know when you're disabled, and I believe everybody goes through this, I went through a why me? Yeah. You know, uh, maybe my parents were bad in the former life, <laughs> and I'm getting punished for it or something. You know, I went you're through like, all that stage of, you know, what happened? How did this happen? And uh, 
I probably rebelled a lot in junior high school, middle school, and, and when I grew up in Queens, New York, because I was just a, I was definitely a juvenile delinquent. I hung out with the wrong crowd. I was doing all the wrong things. Yeah. Uh, but luckily, um, the women, and I'm talking about junior high, junior high, high school, and college didn't really care. Even to this day, it's, it's been a blessing that women um, they don't really see the disability. I mean, for the most part. The yeah, yeah don't see the disability. Um, and I think now it has a lot to do because of all the things that I've accomplished. You know, I jump out of airplanes. I, uh, I'm on the red carpet. So I think they're able to look past the disability. As yeah. Well as stuff done. Yeah. Well, we always say as women, boy, men got confidence. We sure see it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it. That's and that's exactly true. what I was about to yeah. say. It's definitely like it is. confidence. It's confidence. Yeah. Thank you. Thank it's you. definitely the confidence. Yeah. yeah. Chris says, what are some symptoms of cerebral palsy? Will the doctors detect it by default or is it something you have to look out for as a parent for the possibility to develop? So the symptoms that we spoke about earlier, so things that the, you may see um, with your child are the way that they move or you may see delay in their development of movement. So maybe they're not, um, they say that some babies, if you pick them up, their head may be pushed back where they, instead of uh, supporting themselves, I mean, most babies, they can't support their heads initially, but we're talking like maybe six to seven months down the line where they're able, actu actually able to do that. Um, their posture is different when you're holding them. Um, sometimes they aren't able to roll over um, on the, like meeting those developmental milestones. Mm -hmm. um, walking and crawling may be something that's delayed and you know movement of their limbs in general there may be some um like we said some jerking movements or slow movements that you're noticing that aren't typical of other infants that you're seeing yeah with that in mind um i work as a medical speech pathologist and we work on swallowing disorders and we work on feeding so those movements during, you know, when they're in the early childhood, um, you can get a lot of assistance with the speech pathologist to be able to help with your feeding. Yeah, because we did talk about that, that sometimes the patients may have that difficulty with swallowing or talking even. Yeah. So when, when I was a baby, I couldn't sit up. I would roll over and he sat me up. Mm-hmm. Now, see, this would be good for, oh, where's Olu? He could talk about all the physical therapy. I know, because he's our physical we miss, therapist. We miss our other guest. <laughs> there's Olu when you The trifecta, the trifecta <laughs> is gone. <laughs> yeah, it's all good, though. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us today. Um, we hope you you tune in with us again in two weeks and connect with us on our business and our businesses on social media. Uh, if you're watching after our live session has ended, you can still leave your questions in the chat and we'll get back to you. If and you if you have any suggestions for a topic that you would like us to cover, send us a DM. If you want to connect with Terry, let us know. Yes, Terry underscore Morer on Instagram. All right. Have a good one, guys. All right. Thanks for coming out, Terry. I appreciate Bye. you. Thank you for having Bye, me. Guys. I appreciate it. Thank you.